The State Similarity Index attempts to quantify how similar American states are to each other relative to other states. The index weighs five major aspects of states – demographics, culture, politics, infrastructure, and geography. The data from the State Similarity Index was used to cluster American states into different regions. This initial clustering resulted in six distinct macro regions and 12 subregions. The first subregion we will explore is North New England. It is comprised of just three states, Vermont, New Hampshire and Maine. They are all located in the Appalachian Mountains, so their terrain is extremely hilly. The vast majority of the region is covered by broadleaf forests. This region is also less densely populated than the majority of states. Because these states are so far north, their climate is quite cold and they get a lot of snowfall. Over 90% of the people in North New England are white. In fact, they are three of the least diverse states in the country. Also, Vermont, New Hampshire and Maine are the three states with the highest median age in the United States. This region is also one of the least religious in the entire country. These states never allowed slavery and, in fact, two of the three states never prohibited interracial marriage. Furthermore, these states are some of the safest in the nation. They have extremely low rates of incarceration and homicide. Ice hockey is much more popular in this region than in the rest of the country. Since 1992, the Democratic candidate for president has always won Vermont and Maine, while Bush only won New Hampshire in 2000. Independent candidates also tend to fare unusually well in this region. Interestingly enough, Vermont and Maine are the only states that allow prisoners to vote. These states have few restrictions on abortion or surrogacy. However, unlike most liberal states, they have relatively few restrictions on guns. In these rural states, there are no skyscrapers and few people use public transportation. A high percentage of homes have their own septic systems. Unlike the rest of the United States, a high percentage of their electricity is not created using fossil fuels. Hydro, wind and nuclear power are their biggest sources of electricity. The other subregion in the northwest region is Boswash. The states that make it up are located in between Boston and Washington, D.C. They include Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Connecticut, Pennsylvania, New York and New Jersey, as well as Delaware and Maryland. This region is one of the most densely populated areas of the country. While a high percentage of the land in these states is urban, most of their land is broadly forests. With the exception of Pennsylvania, these states have a lot of coastline that borders the Atlantic Ocean. While most people in these states are white, Boswash also has a significant population of blacks and Latinos. Unlike the rest of the country, Latinos in this region usually come from Puerto Rico or the Dominican Republic. These states also have the highest concentration of people with Italian ancestry in the United States. Boswash is also one of the most highly educated and wealthiest areas of the country. Seven of the eight Ivy League schools are in the region. The states in the Boswash region were all a part of the original 13 colonies. Boswash is not the most religious part of the country, but the percentage of Catholics in this region is the highest in the country. Their people tend to express their feelings without restraint. In recent decades, the states in the Boswash region almost always vote for Democratic presidential candidates. Except for Pennsylvania, their state legislatures also have more Democrats than Republicans. As a result, their laws are favorable to unionization. Furthermore, these states have more laws restricting guns than the rest of the country. The large cities in these states have many skyscrapers and relatively few single-family homes. The infrastructure and buildings in this region are older than most other states. New York, Boston and Washington have three of the four largest subway systems in the country. It is also the only area of the United States where passenger rail is regularly used. Natural gas is the biggest source of power in the region. Moving on to the Midwest, the next sub-region we will look at is the Great Lakes. It includes Minnesota, Wisconsin, Illinois, Indiana, Michigan and Ohio. Pennsylvania could also be included since it is a transitional state between these regions. As its name suggests, all the states in the region border the Great Lakes. Despite bordering these large freshwater lakes, most of the water in this region flows into the Mississippi River and its tributaries. 
These states get a moderate amount of rainfall while having warm summers and cold winters. Corn and soybean are especially popular crops in the farmlands of this region. The demographics of states in the Great Lakes region are fairly representative of the entire United States, except that they have a lower percentage of Latinos. With the exception of Illinois, around 80% of the people in these states are white. These states are all mostly Protestant but have significant Catholic populations as well. In addition, this region is neither especially poor nor rich. These states were all part of the Union during the Civil War. The people in this region are neither especially religious nor especially irreligious. They have about the same percentages of Evangelical Protestants, Mainline Protestants and Roman Catholics. Their people are known to be friendly and practical. All the states in this region have at least one university that is part of the Big Ten. In the past 20 years, all of the states in the Great Lakes region have had both Republican and Democratic governors. However, most of these states tend to vote for Democratic presidential candidates. A nickname for the Great Lakes region is the Rust Belt, since these states have experienced a decline in manufacturing due to outsourcing these states still produce more manufactured goods per capita than the national average. To transport their goods, they tend to have a dense network of freight railroads. Since they are located next to the Great Lakes, almost all the public water supply in these states has its source in freshwater. The other subregion in the Midwest is the Great Plains. It includes North Dakota, South Dakota, Nebraska, Iowa, and Kansas. Missouri could also be included, although it is a transitional state between the Great Plains and the Southeast. The terrain in this region is relatively flat, a very low percentage is forested. Soybean and corn are the two primary crops farmed in this region. Before its cultivation, the Great Plains was mostly grassland. Furthermore, the states in this region are all landlocked. The population density is also quite low in the Great Plains. The vast majority of the region's residents are white. People with German ancestry are by far the largest group in the region. These states generally have a higher percentage of married people than the national average. Their people are not the most religious or least religious in the country. A relatively high percentage of their people own guns and have hunting licenses. Many of this region's congressmen are Republicans. Most states in the Great Plains have not voted for a Democratic presidential candidate since 1964. These states do not allow undocumented immigrants to get driver's licenses. A high percentage of people in the Great Plains region live in single-family homes. The data from the State Similarity Index only groups the southern states of Texas and Oklahoma into the south-central region of the United States. The Great Plains physiographic region runs through both Texas and Oklahoma. The region gets about the same amount of rainfall as the United States average. However, their western portions are significantly drier than their eastern portions. As a result, they have about equal percentages of pasture land, farmland and forested land. These states also have hotter temperatures than most states since they are at relatively low latitudes. The people in Texas and Oklahoma tend to be very religious. A high percentage of their people are evangelical Christians. Country music is generally more popular in this region than average. Both states have multiple universities in the Big 12. Furthermore, these states have high rates of incarceration and allow the death penalty. Since 1980, the Republican candidate for president has always won Texas and Oklahoma. Their governments are generally run by Republicans too. As a result, they have few regulations on homeschooling and do not ban corporal punishment in schools. Furthermore, they have few restrictions on guns. The production of fossil fuels is an important industry in the South Central region. A huge amount of oil and gas is extracted from Oklahoma and Texas, so they have many pipelines. Few people in these states use public transportation, since most of their households have vehicles. However, Texas has far more Latinos since it has many immigrants from Mexico, while Oklahoma has far more Native Americans. As a result, Texas tends to have more Catholics as well. The next region we will explore is the Southeast. It includes Louisiana, Arkansas, Kentucky, Tennessee, Alabama, Mississippi, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Virginia, and West Virginia. The Southeast region has hotter temperatures and receives more rainfall than the average state. 
As a result, most states in this region have a subtropical climate. The majority of the landscape in southeast is forested, but it also has a significant amount of farmland as well. Soybean is the most common crop in the region, but corn and cotton are also common. All the states in the southeast had once allowed slavery. Even after the Civil War, they continued the practice of racial segregation and did not allow interracial marriage. These states are some of the most religious in the country. A high percentage of their people are part of the Baptist Church, while there are relatively few Catholics. A relatively high percentage of the people in this region smoke. In fact, tobacco cultivation was once a large part of the region's economy. Their people are known to have a friendly personality, although the region also has a high rate of incarceration. Furthermore, country music is especially popular in this region. These states are among the most conservative in the nation. As a result, they all have Republican governors. Most of their judges and legislators are Republicans as well. The death penalty is still allowed in most of these states. The laws in the Southeast region do not favor immigration or unionization. They also tend to have few restrictions on guns, but many restrictions on abortions. More than 10% of the housing units in the Southeast region are mobile homes. This region also has relatively few physicians per capita. Demographics is one aspect in which this region varies widely. While Mississippi has the highest percentage of black people in the country, over 90% of people in West Virginia are white. Still, most white people in this region identify as American, since their ancestors did not recently immigrate to the US. The region has a higher poverty rate and obesity rate than the rest of the country. With the exception of Virginia, a low percentage of their people are college graduates. The third subregion in the South is Florida, since it has some unique characteristics. Florida is the only state that borders both the Gulf of Mexico and the Atlantic Ocean. In fact, it is America's flattest state. Much of the state is home to the Everglades, a large wetland located near Miami. Known as a major destination for retirees, Florida's population includes a significant number of older adults. As a result, many of its residents are not originally from the South. Unlike much of the South, the state has a high percentage of Latino residents, particularly from Cuba. Attractions like theme parks and numerous beaches contribute to an economy that benefits greatly from tourism. Moving on to the West region, let's look at the Southwest subregion, which includes just three states, Nevada, Arizona and New Mexico. These states have many abrupt changes in elevation. They are quite mountainous and also landlocked. The Southwest region has some of the lowest average rainfall totals in the entire country, so it is mostly desert. Furthermore, these states are sparsely populated and a vast majority of their people are concentrated in their few urban areas. The Southwest region has some of the highest percentages of Latinos in the country. They also have a significant percentage of Native Americans since the Navajo Reservation is located across Arizona and New Mexico. Their people tend to have lower incomes and education levels than the United States average. Most of this region was the territory of Mexico before the United States expanded into this area. Due to immigration from Mexico, a high percentage of their population natively speaks Spanish. While a high percentage of their people are Catholic, most people in these states are Protestant. The people in this region are known to be laid back and creative. Although many people in Nevada, Arizona and New Mexico have guns, few have hunting licenses. Since the Southwest region has grown quickly in the past decades, most of their buildings and infrastructure tend to be quite new. There are many gold, silver and copper mines in these states. Because these states are so sparsely populated, roads and railways are few and far between in this region. The Southwestern states have few gun restrictions. They also have few restrictions on marijuana. Furthermore, these states tend to have low property and sales taxes. The next region we will look at is the Rocky Mountain subregion. The states include Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, Utah and Colorado. As their name suggests, all the states in this region are in the Rocky Mountains. Every state except Idaho is double landlocked. Since their land is at a high elevation and relatively high latitudes, the region's climate is colder than average. Furthermore, these states get little rainfall. The Rocky Mountain states are also some of the most sparsely populated in the country. A high percentage of the population in the Rocky Mountain region is white. 
However, due to recent immigration from Mexico, some of these states also have significant Latino populations. Furthermore, this region has a higher percentage of married people than the national average. A high percentage of the people in the Rocky Mountain region live in single-family homes. These states have many gold, silver, and uranium mines. They tend to use a high amount of water per capita since they irrigate their land. With the exception of Utah, they are some of the most individualist states in the country. A high percentage of their people have guns and hunting licenses. Their suicide rates are quite high as well. Colorado is an outlier since it is the only Rocky Mountain state that is not controlled by the Republican Party. Unlike most states, the Rocky Mountain region preferred Ted Cruz to Donald Trump in the presidential primaries. They all have few restrictions on guns. The final subregion in the West is the Pacific Coast. It includes just three states, California, Oregon, and Washington. They have a lot of coastline along the Pacific Ocean. In addition, these states have some of the most prominent peaks in the country. Oregon, Washington, and California also have a wide variety of climates. They also have a variety of land cover types, including pastures, farmland, forests, and barren deserts. They are known to have creative and relaxed personalities. They also tend to do a lot of exercises and outdoor activities. Soccer is more popular in this region than in most other areas of the country. Furthermore, this region has relatively high rates of drug usage, but low rates of homicide. The Pacific Coast is one of the most liberal regions in the United States. Since 1992, these states have only voted for Democrats in presidential elections. California, Washington and Oregon have all legalized the recreational use of marijuana. These states also have policies that favor unionization. Their governments have a policy of not cooperating with the federal authorities on immigration. The region has higher minimum wages than much of the country. Furthermore, these states have many civil rights laws. In the beginning, many people were attracted to the Pacific Coast region to mine gold and silver. Now the high technology industry has become very important for the economy of these states. Since these states are located on the coast, this region also has a lot of cargo port infrastructure. Hydropower is used more often to create electricity than in other parts of the country. Another way in which these states are similar is that they have a relatively high percentage of union members. The final two regions are individual states. Both Alaska and Hawaii are extremely unique compared to the rest of the country. Separated from the contiguous United States by Canada, Alaska is the largest and most sparsely populated U.S. state. Unlike the rest of the United States, Alaska is home to numerous glaciers and fjords. Alaska is one of the few states where indigenous peoples make up a significant portion of the population. As a result, native traditions such as whaling, fishing and crafting are cultural practices seen in Alaska. Alaska has unique policies such as the Permanent Fund Dividend, which distributes a portion of state oil revenues to residents. It is also the only state that not only bans the death penalty but also bans sentences of life in prison. Due to its vast and rugged terrain, many of Alaska's communities are accessible only by plane or boat. Now let's move from the most northern state to the most southern state, Hawaii. It is the only state entirely located on islands. They were formed by volcanic activity and the state is home to active volcanoes like Kilauea and Mauna Loa on the Big Island. Hawaii has a tropical climate with lush rainforests. It has the highest percentage of residents of Asian descent among all U.S. states. Native Hawaiians have a unique cultural and historical presence in the state. Although a majority of Hawaiians are Christian, Hawaii has the highest percentage of Buddhists in the United States. Hawaii is also one of the most liberal states in the country. It is Obama's home state and almost always votes for presidential candidates from the Democratic Party. Please like and subscribe to the Objective List channel as there will be even more interesting videos coming soon.